He's like, how am I going to follow this funny guy? How do I follow that? <laughs> I can't tell jokes from behind my head. You know? <laughs> great job, brother. Great job. Great job. You're awesome. <laughs> say it again. You were awesome as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Again, I want to say thank you for coming out to support the Lupus Foundation today. Thank you again to Joseph Butter for putting this thing on and getting us in here. And the invitation. I appreciate it. I'm glad I could participate and help out. And thank you again to David Busters for allowing us to do this, you know, come up here and perform and do stuff for you guys. It's been a good time. Uh, <laughs> if you think about it, I love David Busters. I come in here and have a blast. It's like a really cheap version of Vegas. If you've ever been to Vegas or casinos, that's exactly what it is. You know, you pay your money, you play the games, you get tickets, and then you get prizes, right? If you're in Vegas, you put your money on the table, you make it, you cash it out, you go buy stuff. Exact same thing. So in other words, we're training our children to be degenerate gamblers. <laughs> That's exactly what's going on. It's hilarious. I had a friend of mine who was supposed to be up here. To, <laughs> he was supposed to show up. Of course, he's five minutes late. He is always late. Everybody knows you got one or two friends, a family member, whatever. They're always late. I'm not talking five, ten minutes hung up in traffic or running late, had to change a diaper, you know, had to wait for the baby. I'm talking, you tell him 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, he'll be walking in the door. Every time. I gave him a nickname. I call him the slowest land mammal on the face of the planet. Because he is. There's different classifications of slow. There's slow, there's sloth, and there's him. And that's just the way it is. He's the slowest dude I know. I love playing the games here. They got this Pac-Man game. You guys like Pac-Man, right? This Pac-Man? The game back here is a four-player version. And if this would have existed when we were kids, we would parents would have been breaking up fights left and right. The way the game works is you're playing each other in like a battle royal. And you know in Pac-Man when you go and you get that power pellet and then you can eat the ghost? In this game, you're not just eating the ghost, you're eating the other players. <laughs> can you imagine what that would have been like as kids? My God, you would never have kids. Your parents would be like, all right, the kids cannot come over. They can't play the game. I just can't break them up. They're breaking furniture. <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff going on. They got another game. You know air hockey. Everybody loves air hockey. They have four-player air hockey. I'm like, oh, my God, all the madness going on. It's amazing. You get four people. You don't know where that is. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, and there's two pucks. Makes it even better. You hit the bar for a little bit, you go play that game, you're lost. Like, oh, man, I don't even know where to win. I quit, I'm out. You win. It's funny, I used to love Chuck E. Cheese, and I'm bashing Chuck E. Cheese right now because Chuck E. Cheese isn't here. And I told you guys earlier, they slapped me when I was a kid, so Chuck E., this is what you get, buddy. Chuck E. Cheese, I saw a guy here at Dave and Buster's, they got sports bar, you get liquor, beer, wine, the whole nine, right? If Chuck E. Cheese had just had beer and wine, I swear I saw a guy get cut off at Chuck E. Cheese. I am not even lying. First of all, to get cut off at Chuck E. Cheese when you're at your kid's birthday party, how embarrassing is that? Like, how do you tell that story later on? Oh yeah, my dad got cut off at my eighth birthday uh, at Chuck E. Cheese, you know. It wasn't like you took your kid to Hooters, you know. That no, was Chuck E. Cheese. It was so bad, the guy is walking to go to the bathroom, he's knocking kids over, trying to get there. I think he's stiff on one of them. I'm like, dude, somebody get a handle on this guy, Jesus. I come to David Bustles, I love it, man. I have no idea. I get here, I am a kid in the candy store, man. I love it. I, I get mad when I run out of power points, don't you? It's like you're right there at the tickets, it's like, I just need one more swipe, one more! Ah! And you go up there, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> can I have some more money? I need some more PowerPoints. <laughs> they never give you more money. Just eat your chicken fingers and shut up. <laughs> That's kind of the way that works. Joe over here, he always puts on Facebook, he puts all these, these poker hands, right? Anybody, you guys play poker? You're familiar with Texas Hold'em. I know you are. He puts up the most ridiculous hands you can think of. <laughs> It's like pocket fives with a potential quad versus a straight flush draw. He's like, pick one. I'm not picking anything. You're like, which one? How am I supposed to pick? That's the most unrealistic scenario you can think of. Just cough. 
Oh my goodness. All right, so uh, I ran into a situation with an ex-girlfriend of mine, and this is a bad situation. You know, women, ladies, you know, if you haven't had your coffee in the morning, but all of them right there, yeah, that's right, go ahead. Don't mess with me before I get my coffee. I tried that one morning, I forgot to start the pot of coffee. <laughs> Big mistake. She wakes up, she's in the kitchen, I'm like, oh, man. I run to the kitchen, <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I forgot to start. I already got it. I already got it. Go, go, do what you were doing. You go back to sleep. I'm like, well, yeah, baby, my bad. I was like, all right, well, you know, no big deal. I was like, well, can I help you? She said, no, I already got it. I'm like, okay. So I leave the kitchen, and me being the dummy I am, I figure, hey, baby, you want to pour me a cup when it's ready? I swear to God, a coffee mug. I'm like, whoa! She threw a coffee mug and breaks behind me. I'm like, oh, my God. Leave that woman alone. So then I'm still trying to be cute. Another dumb idea. So I'm peeking around the corner. Is the coffee ready yet? And then a butter knife came out. I'm like, you know what I got? <laughs> I went outside. I took the dog. I was like, I was worried about our safety. I said, come on, boy. Let's get the hell out of here. We go outside. I call my boss. I'm like, yo, honey, I'm going to be late for work. He said, what happened? I said, I forgot to put the coffee on in time. He said, dude, take your time. <laughs> I don't I want you to come to work. I don't want to come to your funeral. <laughs> one more. All right, one more joke. I had a buddy I used to work with, and it's a true story. He was into extreme sports. He went skydiving on a regular basis. And he asked me all the time. He's like, dude, do you want to go skydiving? I'm like, yeah, I do want to go skydiving. I'll go skydiving me sometime. He calls me at 6.30 a.m. on a Saturday. No one I go out partying on Fridays. Big mistake. I answer the phone, I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? What's going on? He's like, you want to go skydiving? I'm like, well, yeah, yeah. What do you, when do you want to go? He said, I pick up half an hour. I said, whoa, 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 hang on, let's, let's slow down a second. You can pick me up in half an hour to go skydiving. He said, yeah. I said, you know what? I'm going to have to give you, uh, I'm going to take a rain check here. He said, why? You said you want to go? I said, yeah, I know, I did say that. I did. But brother, it's going to take me more than a half an hour to mentally prepare myself to go to an airport, put on that weird suit, climb into an airplane, go 20,000 feet in the air, and jump out. It takes more than, give me like a week's notice next time that I'm all about it. I can't, you can't really prepare yourself to jump out of an airplane, especially when they tell you 70% of the parachutes don't open. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to make that move in half an hour. All right, guys, that's my time. Thank you. Thank you again, David Boston, for coming out to the Foundation.